ChatGPT just launched a brand new AI assistant feature called Pulse that's going to blow your mind. In addition to that, they released a bunch of secret updates that you can only see if you go into the release notes, but don't worry, because by the end of the video, I'm gonna walk you through how to access all these things, how to use them, and some pretty cool things that you can now do with ChatGPT. Okay, now in just a second, I'm gonna do a screen recording and show you literally exactly what this looks like inside of ChatGPT. Right now, it's only available on mobile, but essentially what this does is it allows ChatGPT to start the conversation with you. So instead of you having to prompt ChatGPT, you could tell ChatGPT what you want to research or it'll just assume what you want to research and it will go off and actually create chats and basically like these curated articles for you, which is pretty cool. In addition to that, you can have this connect to your Gmail and your Google Calendar in order to provide you with additional context for more relevant suggestions. When your calendar is connected, ChatGPT might be able to draft a sample meeting agenda, remind you to buy a birthday gift, surface restaurant recommendations for an upcoming trip, and a bunch of other things like that. Now, I do want to note that these integrations are turned off by default, but you can turn them on at any time inside of your settings. In addition to that, topics shown in posts go through a safety check to avoid showing you harmful content that's going to end up violating their policy, but basically, you get to decide what is going to show here. You can choose from a bunch of things that they've actually curated. You could tell it if you want to share something else. And basically, you could get ChatGPT to do things for you. And what this is essentially meant for is to have ChatGPT work for you, not keep you scrolling. So this allows ChatGPT to do research, to do things in the background, so you can actually get insights into, hey, this is what you should be learning about. This is what you should be thinking about. Here are things in your calendar or your Gmail that you might have missed or reminders for stuff around that. Okay, so ChatGPT just launched a brand new Pulse feature. So now when you pull up ChatGPT, you're going to see today's Pulse right here. And you could see that you can actually come over here and click into all of these different things about all the different topics that you interact with. For example, I'm getting a lot of ones around creators, I'm getting ones around AI automations, because these are the things that I actually interact with. What you can do is you could save this, you could thumbs up it, which is positive feedback to ChatGPT, you could thumb down it, which is gonna be negative feedback to ChatGPT, you could actually download this or share the link to the chat simply by just clicking on this if you wanted to share it with somebody else. Now, we keep going down a little bit, you'll be able to see that it can actually proactively read both your calendar and your email if you give it permission here. In addition to that, we could see down here that you could decide what actually shows up here. So if you're curious about something, tell it. If you wanna learn more about something, tell it. If you want it to keep you updated on something, tell it. If you just wanna share something with it, tell it. And as we could see, this continues to go through and there are tons and tons of different things here. In addition to that, if you wanted to surface more things, you can tell it to specify exactly what that is around. You could get notified daily when this is actually created. And if you scroll all the way down, you're going to see curate for tomorrow right here. This allows you to tell it and actually have some insight into what it's going to do tomorrow. And then it will actually ask you if you want to share anything else with it, which you can. And you can actually look at your feedback history up here in order to see if you've given it positive feedback, negative feedback, et cetera. And again, right now, this is only for pro users, but in the future, I'd imagine that this is going to get rolled out to everybody pretty quickly because that's typically how ChatGPT does stuff. And um, this is honestly a feature that, uh, I'm really enjoying. Now, before I get into all those other changes that ChatGPT secretly released, I wanted to remind you to smash that subscribe button if you wanna get better with ChatGPT or just learn how to automate your work with AI. I upload videos like this every single day and you're not gonna to wanna to miss them. Now. The next update that they released yesterday is that project sharing is now available on ChatGPT. So essentially, you can share a project with teammates that are in your workspace. You can add files and instructions together in order to guide ChatGPT's response toward some shared goal. In the past, if you had a team membership or you had a business membership, it didn't actually link everything together and you basically all had your own instance of ChatGPT, which is pretty useless when you think about a business business or a team using ChatGPT, obviously you want people to be able to use this together and now that can actually happen. You can see down here that you can invite members to your workspace by individual email, group email, or a shared link. You can add or remove project members. You can 
can set project access permissions. So if you only want certain people like analysts or managers or VPs to have it, you can do that. Or you could do it by department. You can create new chats, add slash remove files, allow members to bring existing chats into projects. And memory is project only, ensuring that any type of sensitive data doesn't accidentally get leaked into that project. In addition to that, ChatGPT is now rolling out this brand new UI for ChatGPT, which essentially is going to show try something new. Now I've had this show up on my ChatGPT multiple times and then it disappears. We could see right now if I refresh it, I don't actually have it here, but I've seen this a few times in my UI now. For some reason though, it keeps going away, but they are going to be rolling this out to everybody, I would assume like within the next week or two. So if we actually come over here, you will be able to see that basically what this is trying to do is unsurface things or resurface things, I think unsurface, unsurface things that ChatGPT wants you to realize that it can help with. And I actually grabbed a list of a bunch of different things here that ChatGPT can help with. So creating a puppet, a quiz, logo idea, decoding something, help me find, help me translate, make this, make that, mock interview coach. There are literally tons of different things here. And I don't know if you guys want me to put these somewhere or something like that, but I'd be more than happy to do that. Just let me know in the comment section below. Now, in addition to that, if we come over here, you will be able to see ChatGPT's release notes. And we could see that ChatGPT has secretly been releasing a lot of things. So ChatGPT Pulse, that is something we covered earlier in the video. ChatGPT Go, now available in Indonesia. Pretty cool. The one that I really wanted to talk about though are these voice updates right here. So if we come over here, you could see that ChatGPT has improved the quality and the latency of responses of the version of advanced voice mode that's powered by ChatGPT 4.0 Mini. Now, this got me thinking. Why on earth would they be doing that? And it also got me thinking, if you didn't know, you can come over into ChatGPT, into your settings, and you can click on show additional models right here. If you have this turned on, what you're gonna notice is that you will now see the legacy models over here. So like I was saying, this is for GPT 4.0 Mini. So if you want to actually use the improved voice, come over here into legacy models, 04 Mini, and this will actually give you the improved voice Voice, and it's the most up-to-date ChatGPT voice, which is kind of weird that they put it in a legacy model like this. In addition to that, ChatGPT also released two other updates right here that I haven't covered yet that I wanted to talk about. This one right here is improvement to search in ChatGPT. So basically, they made further improvements to search in ChatGPT, which make your results more accurate, reliable, and useful. They focused on three things here, and I really think that this foreshadows what is to come with ChatGPT. The first thing that they focus on is going to be the factuality. So there's fewer hallucinations, which actually improves the quality of search results. Secondly, shopping. So search is way better at detecting shopping intent, showing products when you want them, and keeping the results focused when you don't want things. Essentially, what I think that they're trying to do here is I think that they're trying to warm us up for when you're just gonna be able to buy things on ChatGPT and when there are ads on ChatGPT. Because I do think that that is coming in 2026, if not at some point in Q4, which would be a really good time for them to launch it so long as there's no bugs. In addition to that, they change the formatting so that answers are better formatted for quick understanding without losing detail or quality. Basically, they're trying to make this similar to AI mode on Google. And then in addition to that, they have new personalization settings, which are now in settings. So if we come over here, click on this, you will now see personalization. You used to have to go into settings in order to see this, but now you don't. You could just see it right here. And I would strongly suggest that you double check this because they deleted a lot of stuff in here. In addition to that, make sure that when you come under advanced right here, that all of this is turned on. Make sure this is turned on make sure these are turned on. If you come to memories right here, make sure that all of these are going to actually be relevant. For example, I like a shorter, punchier version of this pitch. I'm gonna delete that because I don't actually want it to know that. I just want them to know that for one chat. So that is something that you need to make sure that you're going through your memory and catching things like that because that right there, 
literally would have just ruined the results that I was getting from ChatGPT when I was trying to have it help me with building out a pitch for one of my YouTube videos for another channel that I have. And if it brought that bias into everything, I'm actually really glad that I'm making this video right now because that would have made me incredibly angry because that isn't something that's a bias that I want brought across all of my chats on ChatGPT. And I definitely don't want it to think that. It was literally just for that one chat that I wanted it to know that. Now, in addition to that, I'm not sure if you guys have seen this, but kind of in the same vein, top right hand corner, turn on temporary chat. This won't appear in your history, it won't update ChatGPT's memory, and it won't be used to train their models. They will keep it for 30 days, so don't ask it anything that's illegal or anything that you wouldn't want anybody else to see, but that's how you turn on a temporary chat to avoid things getting shown in your memories that have nothing to do with something you want saved. Not sure if you've seen the reports yet, but Goldman Sachs just came out and said that they think in the next 12 months, AI is gonna replace over 300 million jobs. So my question for you is, are you going to be one of those people that's replacing those jobs, or are you going to be one of the people that gets replaced because you didn't embrace AI? And that's exactly why I created AI Automation School that you could check out at the pinned comment below. In fact, I have a special launch pricing right now, so if you wanna stay ahead of what's happening in AI, and you wanna learn how to automate your work with AI, how to make more money with AI, how to build AI agents without knowing having to code, or you just want me to audit your personal AI workflow so we could speed things up for you, I strongly suggest that you check it out. Now, if you like this video, I strongly suggest you check out this video right here that shows you how to connect ChatGPT to more than 500 plus apps. I'll see you over there.